All right, all right, all right. Guru here. Sunday morning, the Lord's Day. Um, we're out here on the, the Willamette. <laughs> uh, I think everybody knows where I am at this point. Let me pan over here so you can see the Wheatland Ferry. And exactly how I'm set up. Um, yeah, man. Lots of fish coming over the falls right now. I mean a lot of fish. Counts are still really good for the Willamette. Um, I think we're close to 15, maybe 16,000 steelhead. Springers, you know, at least... 150 to 200 a day. Right now, I'm just got a uh, oh, basically a plunking rig, a couple ounces to keep me down. You know, spin and glow, piece of tuna belly, some eggs, and uh, we're gonna see what happens. Um, you know, typically this is kind of how we set up on the Willamette. Um, you know, uh, if you look at the bank right here. See how it drops really hard? I'm not very far from the bank, maybe 20 feet. Um, sometimes we're closer, but um, the sun's right up over there, so I'm on the shaded side. Uh, I usually try, you know, this is where we seem to have the best luck is on the sides of the river that are like this. Because um, the fish, man, we've seen pods of steelhead, you know, go up and five six feet of water no problem uh up this river you know they always choose the path of least resistance you know sometimes we get them over there there's a great big gravel bar that you can see right there but it comes way out here and you know sometimes they'll follow that in the morning i'm gonna probably try this for an hour and then i'll row over there anchor up and then try off the gravel bar you know it just all depends we get them in different spots but typically this is kind of the the spot where we get them so you can see i'm lined up with the point down there and then if you turn around i'm lined up with the point right there so i'm actually right on the edge of kind of the the fast to slow to current i can't be i might be in like 10 feet of water right now um you know so this is kind of typical what we do on the Willamette. There's other spots that we do different things, but um, you know, a lot of times we just throw a spinner. We're just running a spinner out back there, but um, a lot of fish have been being caught. I mean, a lot of fish. Um, I've had a bunch of honeydew projects I've had to do, so I haven't been doing this much fishing lately, but I am now, I got most of those projects done. Plus I was, um, Oh, building a lot of custom tackle for people here of late. A lot of custom tackle. A lot of spinners for for the guys for summer Chinooks and summer steelhead. And, um, you know, people are catching fish everywhere. Uh, there's springers down in the Trask. There's springers in the, the Nestucca. Um, they've been catching summer steelhead in the Nestucca. Even the Sandy's been putting out. Now, it went dingy. The Sandy did. It got real dingy, but it was still putting out fish. And it wouldn't surprise me if a few of those summer Chinooks are starting to, to nose in. Typically on the Sandy, you don't see them, you know, in big numbers till July um, or late June, early July. But um, it wouldn't surprise me if some were coming in. Um, they opened up the Columbia for a little while. I'm not sure if it's still open, so always consult your eggs, but it was opening up. Um, they were getting a ton of steelhead down, uh, below the falls on the Willamette there for a while. There's just, there's fish everywhere, guys. So this Memorial Day weekend, I sure hope that you guys are out there and, and you're catching fish and having a good time with your family. And, and don't forget, you know, this Memorial Day it's about remembering those who, uh, who, who made the ultimate sacrifice. And, uh, oh, there's fish just rolled way down there. Um, you know, take time to, you know, thank people who were in the military. And, um, you know, for me, I, I have a, a rich history of military people in my family. Um, 
you know, my grandfather served in three different wars. So, you know, I always take time to remember him. He was such a, uh, you know, a, such a role model for me and, um, you know, the type of person I wanted to be. And, uh, you know, so I always take time to remember old grandpa. He, you know, my granddad, you know, my granddad, Lewis, he, he was a war fighter. He didn't hunt. He didn't fish. He didn't do anything like that. He just like, he was a killer. <laughs> you know, that's what he did. <laughs> and he did it well. And he did it in World War II, Korea and Vietnam. And, you know, that was his thing. He, he was just a warrior. That's what he was. And, uh, you know, I take time to remember him and all those like him who, uh, who sacrifice so much of their life so we can be free and have these freedoms, you know, out here to, to come catch fish and just, you know, enjoy America the way it should be. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's so important that we thank these people, um, on Memorial Day weekend, you know, even if it's not Monday, you know, even if you meet a veteran and just say, hey, thanks for your service. You know, granddad always said, if you didn't serve in the military, what you could do is you could serve the veterans who did. So I've done that a lot, um, a lot, a lot. And I always thank a veteran every time that I meet them. And, uh, you know, they they deserve our respect and uh, they have much, much, you know, uh, honor that is bestowed upon them that they have definitely deserved. So, um, thank a veteran, take them fishing, take them hunting. Even if you just take them out, you know, uh, I used to have veterans, uh, when I had my own shooting range, I would bring veterans out to my shooting range and just let them start shooting, take them shooting. Um, anything to, you know, to say thank you that you can do. So, but, uh, man, we have sure been blessed with some nice weather here. Um, the other thing about the Willamette, and it's not real thick, there is some. I wish I was in a better spot, but um, the moss, the moss that usually grows here, it's not real thick, and we're almost to the first of June, so usually about every 20 to 30 minutes, we pull up, clean the moss off the lines and stuff, um, you know, but it's not real bad yet because the water is still super, super cold. Me and uh, my better half, my wife, were, uh, were way up by Detroit Lake yesterday up picking mushrooms. And, um, man, the water on the upper Sandy I'm sure looked beautiful. All kinds of guys out fishing. That was beautiful to see. Um, bunch of guys all up and down the river. So, and probably ladies too, so. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome to, you know, because there's so many fish right now, um, you know, coming up this system and all kinds of systems. The other thing I want to mention too, if you guys have been watching and I tried to instill this in everybody, the Umpqua live fish cam, man, that live fish cam on the Umpqua, I have been seeing just some of the most beautiful fish and just lots of hatchery fish of Chinooks, steelhead, you know, mostly Chinooks right now, a few steelhead here and there, but, um, man, a lot of, you know, 20 plus pound hatchery Chinooks and that's all at Winchester Dam. So that's all right there, Roseburg. So you can get above Winchester and there's lots of places up there to go fishing. I would definitely highly consider that you guys go down there soon. <laughs> but at least take the time um, to check out the Umqua Fish Cam. It gives you a real insight to the times of day that the fish travel up that. And one thing that I have taken away from it big time is... Um, oh, I thought I'd seen another fish roll over there. Well, eh, it looked like something was in the water over there. You can smell, you can kind of tell by the foam. You can kind of see the current break over there. But doesn't, well, there's a lot of smallmouth bass in here. 
tons of them and there's no limit anymore so you can come here and keep as many as you want we're gonna do a big fish fry soon but getting back to the umqua fish cam um you know there's uh there's just so many fish coming up right now, right there. And the time of day, I've really noticed that last two hours, it seems like there's more fish moving, you know, that last two hours of light, especially the last hour of light into the, into the first hour of darkness, man, those fish seem to be boogieing. And that is definitely a pattern. You know, I see quite a fish move, quite a few fish moving in the morning because I usually watch it on my way to work this time of year. But man, if there definitely is a pattern of fish that are moving up that river um, in the evenings. There's no doubt about it. So um, I'm trying that here. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna fish the morning and see if I get anything. And then um, I'm gonna fish the come back tonight in the evening. So I'll fish probably till, I don't know, about noon today, go home for lunch, and then get back out here about five and um, and fish till dark. And, um, or sundown, you can fish till sundown, I think is the rules. But um, uh, yeah, man, this is, you know, a pattern that definitely needs more exploration and, and, uh, you know, I, I've noticed it. So check out that Umqua fish cam. It did, you know, it can give you some real insight on the way, times of day that fish travel. Not necessarily, you know, the the depths or anything like that, but, um, you know, there's a pattern there. There's most definitely a pattern. Um, Remember, you know, something the, the old salty dogs before me, something they taught me. So if you guys aren't aware of it, I'm going to teach it to you. So one is lucky. You catch one fish one way, that's lucky. You catch two fish the same way, that's a theory. You catch three fish the same way, that's a pattern. And so as fishermen, we... We need to have as many patterns in our tackle box as we can. And I can't tell you how critical that is. That's that's the thing where if one pattern isn't working, you can switch to another pattern and then another pattern and then another pattern. Because not every pattern will work, you know, every time. There are some times, and let me give you a great example of that, especially in steelhead fishing. I'm going to stand up here. You know... You see yarnies. Everybody, you know, nowadays yarnies are a common thing. Well, back in the 60s and the 70s, yarn is what everybody used, right? So there wasn't hardly, you know, anything else other than yarn. Well, as soon as the corky came out, everybody was using corkies and or, you know, the first soft plastics. And, you know, and beads, really, for that matter, hard beads. And now you've seen it come first full circle, those patterns, because everybody's using soft beads, everybody's using yarnies, or yarnies with bait. I mean, I, I've seen this in the, you know, what I would like to consider four plus decades of, of fishing, that these patterns that come in and out, and the really, really good fishermen that I know have a whole list of patterns that if one ain't working, boom, they're going to another one. And especially if fish are running and you know fish are in the river um, and people are catching fish around you, pay attention definitely to what they're using and, um, you know, see what their pattern is. You know, because the patterns change. I've seen them change. I've seen them change on the Columbia so fast, you know, especially for springers, where one minute, you know, bait wrap quick fish are just kicking ass and then the bite goes off. And then you see a bunch of guys back bouncing eggs and or prawns or whatever. And all of a sudden they're getting bit, but nobody with bait wrap quick fish is getting anything. But the, the back bouncing guys are killing them, you know, or vice versa, you know, where the guys on the bank are absolutely destroying the spring Chinook, but the guys in the boats out there aren't doing shit. 
and that should tell you something right there as far as the pattern in which they come up the river not necessarily bait and or you know plugs or anything like that but you know sometimes those fish get a little tighter to the bank so oh i thought we were getting bit there for a minute maybe not i don't see it bouncing like that there's a lot of sucker fish in here too the other day I caught, I should post that picture. I had a, a, oh no, probably like a two and a half pound smallmouth come up and just hammer my eggs and tuna belly. That was pretty cool. <laughs> but um, we're, uh, uh, we're, oh, what time is it? I think it's a little after seven. Yeah, it's a little after seven right now. Um, so, but hey, I got a bunch of new subscribers um all last week and the week before thanks guys thanks for subscribing to the channel thank you for your trust thank you for your support it is greatly appreciated more than you can possibly imagine and um, i'm gonna keep putting out content videos like this and uh you know where when how and uh hopefully that you know continues to help a lot of people I've had a lot of people, um, one gentleman in particular from Estacada who listened to me. He went to a spot that I showed on the Nastucca, caught a 12 pound hatchery buck steelhead. And I've had lots of people like that. You know, man, that just does my heart so much joy. You can't possibly imagine helping people uh, catch more fish and and just be successful on the water if you if you haven't figured it out yet i'm not a fish hog and uh you know my channel is not about watching people catch fish if you want to watch people catch fish there's lots of other channels that you can do that and please if go go to those channels if you want to watch them catch fish but that's not what this channel is about this channel is about where and when and how and uh this is one of my favorite spots. It's about 15 minutes from home. And uh, as you can see, I am the only fisherman here. If you look across there, there's only four trucks and four boats in this area of river right now. So that should tell you something. There is lots of places just like this all up and down the Willamette that you can come and have the whole place to yourself. And let me tell you, it. it this is a lot of river. There's plenty of room for everyone. So um, that being said, God bless, shoot straight, tight lines, get out there and be wild. Guru out.